Botswana isn't necessarily famous for its music, though it has some notable mentions. Take V Mampizi for example. When he dropped Taku Taku way back in 2000 and something, the song took over many dance floors, too many to count, and he was touring countries while at it. Since then, he has become arguably the most famous musician within Botswana to this day. Then you also get the likes of Chamago, who has been a star for as long as I can remember. Hensi has hits for days and his voice is recognizable to many. Not forgetting the legendary Franco with his Kwasa Kwasa style. DJ Fresh, who you'd bet your last dollar is South African, is actually from Botswana. And the list goes on. But today, I'm here to talk about another Botswana singer that has shaken many tables for a number of reasons. Buckle up, this is the no BS version. Lorraine Lionheart, otherwise known as the Kalahari Lioness, has been one of the most visible music ambassadors for Botswana. I interviewed her a few years ago and we spoke about how she built her brand to be what it is, including diving into her early life. Well, basically, um, I'm a singer-songwriter from beautiful Botswana. Um, I was born and raised in the Kalahari Desert of Botswana, but I'm currently based in the United Kingdom. Uh, my music, I class it uh, mostly as Afro-pop, uh, to be honest. Yeah, so that's that's basically what I do. And I am trying to incorporate bits of all Africa into my music because of my appreciation of the entire continent, not just um, specializing in Botswana sound. One thing that stood out when I spoke to her was for all the moves she's making, she was managing and orchestrating things herself, top to bottom. Since then, she has continuously found ways to break the internet while achieving impressive milestones in her career. For starters, she holds a Bachelor of Science Honors degree in Music Technology and Management and a Master's of Arts degree in Music Production. And peep this, she's about to complete a PhD in Ethnomusicology at the University of London. Bruh. She was named Music Artist and Entertainer of the Year 2015 at the African Women in Europe Awards in Geneva. And there's more. Take the time she sang for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the former Duke and Duchess of Sussex in 2018. Then she was invited to sing for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee in 2022 in the UK. In the same year, 2022, she signed a global artist management contract in the USA. And then in 2023, she made an appearance at the coronation of the King and Queen, again representing Botswana. And she continues to make moves. Let's hop over to social. And she's on track to reach a million followers on Instagram and is currently at about 963,000 followers, which she's pretty close. She was only at 300,000 followers in 2021, three years ago. She managed to triple that. Anyway, <laughs> on Facebook, she has 900,000 followers and is on course for a million again. A lot of people, including myself, would die for such numbers to leverage social for exponential growth, but she's already done it multiple times over. This goes without saying, but she also has some of the best outfits in the game. Just look at that and that. Styling wise, she has a unique aesthetic that has been hard to miss, especially over the last 10 or so years. It's unique, it's Afrocentric, it stands out and it's her. For me, this is an interesting lesson in branding yourself, especially as a musician, finding your niche that amplifies what you do further and further, then continuing to find ways to double down on it. We've seen the likes of STL, AKA Stella Mwangi from Kenya, focus on doing music for sync, featuring in TV shows, movies, etc. And, and she's had great success doing it. That's an example of a musician niching down and not trying to occupy the exact same spaces as those that would be considered popular musicians based on commercial success. All this to say, if you're a musician, especially from countries that don't get as much airtime as others in Africa, try different things and see where you can win. 
from her stellar academic achievements to her royal performances, Lorraine Lionheart has proved time and again that she's more than just a pretty face or a catchy tune. She is a true ambassador for Botswana's rich musical heritage and a testament to the power of talent, hard work, and most importantly in the context of this video, strategic branding. I think for me, uh, because uh, luckily I've had good reception for my music around here, for me it's quite an advantage because I'm actually bringing something new to them. Um, and I think as well, uh, because my music is more the southern african sound as well and uh you know usually when people think about african music in the western world i don't know much about in canada but say in europe or in uk the first thing that comes to them is west african music they're more they're more familiar with uh, west african music than they are with southern african music so it, yeah it's, it's an advantage to me because it actually introduces something new to them I mean, I do um, children, well, not just children, I do uh, African music workshops. And there are loads of uh, other African artists uh, in the UK who offer African music workshops. And most of them are doing drumming and that kind of uh, Mali, Senegalese uh, stuff. But because I designed my own workshops based on the music from the Kalahari Desert, uh, from th that kind of culture, I have my own niche, <laughs> so I become totally uh, unique in what I do and have absolutely no competition, which, <laughs> yeah, which is an advantage. So, yeah, I think uh, I'm well placed uh, where I am, I believe so. And uh, coming from Botswana as well, we are so desperately need to get our sound out there to the world. So, yeah. As her follower count continues to soar and her influence expands globally, one thing is clear, the Kalahari Lioness isn't just breaking the internet, she's reshaping what it means to be a multifaceted entertainer from what would traditionally be regarded as a small country, especially in terms of music, with less eyes on it on the continent. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below and let's have a healthy discussion around it. Otherwise, that's it for me. My name is M. Jomoto, son of Zimbabwe signing out. Peace. Nain, nain.